Hello everyone, Insane Frame here. If you're new here, welcome on in. If you're returning, glad to have you back. In the last video, I just completed XCOM 2 with a single ranger, quite a spicy one. Go check that out if you're interested, it'll be very much appreciated. But today, I thought maybe let's try something a bit more difficult in the Fallout verse. And well, what better way than to give the enemies a huge buff? So today, we're going to see if we can beat Fallout 4 with all enemies being legendary. I'm using Nexus mods, the legendary apocalypse clips game of the year edition mod on screen now and it will also be in the description down below if you're interested in trying it out for yourself so whilst this is a very bad for a normal playthrough i have to say i do in fact have a plan and well it will require some doomsday levels of preparation but i think once the ball gets rolling we'll snowball out of control and the enemies are going to be running to the hills as we do the most insane plays but some of you may be asking why is this challenge so difficult and those who have played the game know legendary enemies can be a nightmare and that is because legendary enemies have a lot of durability thanks to mutating when damaged that they effectively get a minimum of 150 percent hp when they mutate but they also get a damage boost and this is the biggest problem since they'll be hitting us like a truck especially especially early on they can be one-shotted with enough damage but it has to be a lot of damage and the second problem is their durability compared to ours since they have lots of hp again especially early on but um, we kind of don't so we're going to have to match that by using power armor and it is a slight trade-off in the early game since we'll be using fusion cores which cost a lot and have to use resources to maintain the armor but the benefits are an absolutely grand canyon apart from the drawback so i think yeah it's definitely worthwhile getting power armor anyway i've waffled on enough so cup of tea in hand moving forwards let's quickly go on to the rules first things first no companions sorry dog meat you're not allowed secondly no cheating or exploits this is kind of obvious and self-explanatory and lastly we're going to be playing on very hard difficulty we do want an authentic experience so this is the difficulty we're playing on so with all said and done it's time to jump in the game so we start on up the standard pre-war lifestyle as a cup of coffee is offered by codsworth our sack of potato son who will become senior potatoes present and of course then the nukes fall and the rest is history we get into vault tech we go off and get frozen then we wake up and the game begins now right out the get-go this is normally a cakewalk but because we've got the mod installed we're going to be facing legendary enemies but the plus side is the legendary enemies will drop legendary loot so it's not all doom and gloom however part of the reason i got five strength right out the get-go is so we can get a security baton on the table so we can start squashing these rad roaches with ease the next part is actually quite tricky since two legendary rad roaches is a bit much but we lock ourselves in with the cryolator and grab the 10 millimeter pistol and the ammo inside the rad roaches run away but we start shooting our way out and get our first useful legendary weapon a crippling 10 millimeter pistol but we don't have the pit boy yet to select it but we have more legendary rad roaches and we shoot them they start making us afraid for our life and we lock ourselves in with the cryolator again since we can still attack but they can't melee us so it saved our bacon twice now but when all is said and done we go ahead and start finishing off the rad roaches and getting our first pieces of legendary loot all of which isn't really useful to us for the most part but we get the pit boy and we can leave one thing i did change when we leave though is i take a stat point out of perception and put it into intelligence since it will help us a heck of a lot later so i decided to rectify that now now we completed the vault it's time to face the wasteland and we level up so the very first perk point we put our point into is fortune finder rank one so we can find caps in containers and between this and scrounger these two are going to be the backbone and our two most important perks this run by a country mile so it's a good start we go ahead and get sean's book from our residence and get plus one endurance so now we have all the stats we'll need for this run and we're all set for the time being so combat is also going to be a big issue especially early on but lucky for us codsworth is willing to search the neighborhood he's not a companion like this as he's helping us with a quest but he can do the fighting so we can loot some goodies from the legendary enemies including a hitman pistol that does 10 percent damage whilst aiming but now that we have everything we need and a random rad roach gives us an irradiated baseball bat which is very nice indeed we go to the red rocket truck stop dogmeat is present 
However, we can't really have him as a companion because that would break the rules. But we do upgrade our bat and we also go into the mole rat den for some easy combat XP. And when they end up on the receiving end of our bat, we are doing extremely well. So we then do the standard of looting the area and acquire a fusion core for our troubles as well. So armed with our ragtag equipment, it's that time in a Fallout playthrough where I go to Trudy's. And since Simone and Wolfgang are named NPCs, they're not legendary, so we can take them out very quickly with our excellent equipment. We also level up in the process, so I get the second perk that's the backbone of our build, Scrounger. So we can now find ammo and containers. Between that and Fortune Finder, we'll be swimming in caps, and that is exactly what we want. We go ahead and travel to a certain location, but my attention span makes me wander off into a random sewage pipe. How? Don't know, but we just go in. It's filled with a squad of raiders, and these guys are no slouch. However, a nice explosion with a frag grenade makes their health bars mutate, letting us fight on somewhat of an equal footing, but we have plenty of Molotovs. So if you can't kill it with bullets, kill it with fire, and we just about manage. We then pick the place clean of many, many valuables and scraps. A nice little exploration here. Now that we're back on track, I go to Sunshine Tidings to go into a certain shack so we can quickly deal with the ghouls. No sweat, no fuss, since the 10mm pistol would do really well. And we grab the Wasteland Survival Guide, so animal kills give us double the meat, allowing us to get double the healing items. All we need now is a couple of finishing touches and we can begin our grand journey into the main story. With our level up I decide to go for cap collector since getting good prices on things will be very beneficial for us. We go back to the red rocket truck stop and we do this fun double turbine single generator designed to save on space and get plus 20 water. It's time to go get some tomatoes from Abernathy Farm and they give us a waypoint for our next side quest in the USAF satellite array. And this is of huge interest to us because they've got quite the loot pool waiting for us there. Since we've been building a lot, we level up to level 5 and we get Fortune Finder rank 2, allowing us to find more caps whilst out and about. Our money worries are almost over, so it's then off to the USAF satellite station as it's not too far. And it's time to get our hands dirty, so we start off by going to the junkyard and getting some loot and using the sentry bot to destroy the local mole rat population and use the terminal to make itself destroyed letting us get some fusion cores. Next, we deal with some legendary rad stacks that makes us just heroically hide in the bunker and shoot them until they decide to get bored. But thanks to the Wasteland Survival Guide, it's double rations for us. But the real reason for coming here is the Juicy Suit of Power Armor. It's nearly got all of its T45 pieces apart from a leg, but it matters not since we put a fusion core in and off we go. However, we have a powerful baseball bat that does 25% increased damage. And now, thanks to the Power Armor, it's an absolute wrecking ball. Naturally, the baseball bat on its own isn't going to cut it, so a complementary bottle cap mine is thrown into three raiders, causing huge damage. Even without any perks, it still does over 300 damage, although Ak Ak is on the receiving end of this, and then our baseball bat ruins her day. So we run around the bunker, taking on any of the raiders, even though they're using double barreled shotguns, we are wearing power armor, so we can just muscle our way through. We claim our prize, which is all the loot, including the silver locket for Abnathy Farm, and we also loot the office for a literary of delicious loot. Oh, it's so good. Once we level up, I decide to go with Gun Nut, since getting upgraded turrets for our settlements is a huge boon and can match the legendary raiders' firepower, guaranteeing us our safe settlements and some extra experience when we build them. With that done, it's time to turn everything into Abernathy Farm to return the locket and we level up. So I decide to go for Scrounger rank 2 so we find even more ammo and containers and with our economy sorted, it's time to get a couple of settlements sorted. The Red Rocket truck stop is sorted and Abernathy Farm just needs some defences and we can get Sanctuary built from the ground up, all in its pre-war glory. So lots and lots of building and claiming Tempine's Bluff and building up Sanctuary, it's time to finally get a combat perk. So it's going to be Heavy Gunner, so we can do 20% more damage with our minigun. Yep, we're going classic Brotherhood of Steel build, power armor and minigun, since deleting health bars is going to be our jam. So in doing this, it's time to make our way to Concord to meet Preston and the Minutemen, since they have something very important for us, especially for this challenge, and it's going to be 
the crux of our build. I get our power armor and minigun and charging to Concord, spitting hundreds of rounds at them. The minigun was just beautiful. I mean, look, it's making leagues for us. They can't stand up to us in direct combat. And ladies and gentlemen, they actually remember their manners since we get an explosive 10 millimeter pistol. So thank you, Raiders. This is amazing. Before going to the Museum of Freedom, I decided to go up the church and climb on top of the roof and then go to the vertebird and then climb across. That way we now have a full set of T-45 armor and even more ammo from a minigun. So we go into the Museum of Freedom from the top entrance and the raiders are very easy picking since the minigun just cuts them down and they can't really keep us at bay so we charge in and give them no chance to complain. They must face the end of a minigun and our barrel just spins and kills them very very quickly we also get lots of caps and ammo in the container so we are a-okay and going strong and eventually we knock on the minutemen's door and get our prize the perception bobblehead this is going to be key to our final form this run preston and co give us a lecture we've just pancaked all of the opposing raiders with a minigun no less however we do level up from this experience and i decide to go ahead and get armor rank one so we can now upgrade our power armor as well as our base armor a very valuable perk indeed especially mid game preston wants us to help him out and help him we shall since we picked up an explosive 10 millimeter pistol an amazing sidearm for us that will carry us and it is a very challenging fight outside and tests us to the utter limit but the death claw shows up just in time and we sort of tag team in a shaky alliance i won't lie it didn't feel normal but i would have at least let the death claw live for his service but once the dueling against the raiders is done it's unfortunate he goes back to his old ways to claw our base off but we say farewell with our superior skill and fitting inside buildings unlike the death claw and just start shooting him we go inside the Museum of Freedom and everybody's safe. So once we go back to Sanctuary, we celebrate by painting our armor, the T-45, with a hot rod paint job. And now it's time to get our next piece of lovely equipment. So we start journeying in and we get Tales of a Junk Town Journey Vendor. It never stops giving, ladies and gentlemen. It is here again in another run, so we're all good. We make our journey towards one of my favorite locations, a pirate ship crewed by a bunch of robots. It's a lovely sight and we go here because we want a pirate ship cannon because it's a pirate ship cannon i actually have a video on the broadsider but besides that it shoots cannonballs and does a lot of damage so let's go see our jolly friends the robot crew of this final vessel but first we take out some ruffians and show them they can't be trusted because we grab ourselves a guidance chip we'll need it for a quest and we also find four fusion cores in an ammo box that is why scrounger is so good Aboard the ship, we meet Captain Ironside. He is an honourable captain, and we had just have so many good characters aboard here. We see Bosun, who sets us off on repairing the ship, and after a couple of chores, the ship lights are back on, and Bosun is awesome. So we had to get a couple of parts from Poseidon Energy for the honourable Captain Ironside, so off we go. But before we set off, we level up, and I decide to get a very unusual perk, and I decide to get Cannibal, so we can eat humanoid enemies to restore health. So a quick walk down to Poseidon Energy, and we see a couple sites fair enough i guess but once we're in it's very straightforward our humble baseball bat lets us take charge and be the critter's worst nightmare so we easily smash them to pieces and we even get our explosive 10 millimeter pistol doing some work as well we get a double kill then we find a magazine a nice find but we get our objective and then since no enemies are around we fast travel back to the honorable captain ironsides and get the radar dish fixed but we are tasked with going to lexington to get ourselves some turbo jumper cables now this is our first real big test since the amount of raiders present is pretty ridiculous so i decided that we need to prepare by getting a boatload of ammo from carlo and trudy so after a fair amount of prep time we can now take the fight to lexington power plant our turning point this run if you will when we get to the corvega power plant we start fighting our way through the raiders and we go through the front door taking out a couple of raiders and before long a throng of raiders decide to start trying to take us out on the roof but little do they know what a waste them since we filled them with iron and when we destroyed them with a lot of five millimeter rounds they are no more we are victorious but it's not the end oh no we decide to go through and climb onto the roof to heal our hp by eating them so nothing goes to waste unfortunately we can't use cannibal in power armor but we can use it if the coast is clear so might as well fill our boots with what's in front of us 
We go further on up to the power plant and we use the old reliable baseball bat to swap the raiders up here. And they aren't long for this world since they both get killed. And of course now they're tenderized, well, let the feast begin. But our true prize for coming here is the repair bobblehead, make confusion cores last 10% longer. So now we're getting more mileage out of our fuel source. Got to say this is fantastic and we are looking pretty good at making cash. Our fusion core troubles are pretty much solved now. So it's now high time we get the turbo jump lead. So we go and clean up the rest of the enemies outside and then remove the evidence by nom nomming our health back up. We also level up and grab heavy gunner rank 2s. So our heavy weapons are doing 40% extra damage. So we're marching on with extra damage now. When we clear out the enemy raiders with very creative method and some explosives of course using our sidearm since it's faster than reloading your weapon and also grabbing a grown out comet always lovely to see we grab the quest item we require and then report on back to captain ironside the ship is attacked once more but since we have awesome robots with lasers it's really no folly and captain ironside give us what we want and shows us the amazing broadsider a naval cannon which boasts an eye-watering amount of damage the only downside is it uses cannonballs but we've already got that covered with our current setup but it's time to get our last piece of equipment so we go south and visit the atom cats but first we level up and i go ahead and get demolition expert letting our explosive do 25 percent more damage that includes the broadsider since the broadsider scales not only with heavy gunner but demolition expert as well so we go ahead and upgrade the lovely cannon with all its max level mods since it only needs gun nut rank one to do so a lovely bit of kit is it not when we test it out on a lone legendary raider admittedly i need to work on my aim but besides that this thing hits like a truck and of course we level up so it's another point into demolition expert rank do giving us a bonus 50 percent damage and also we all get a grenade throwing arc so now we can aim our grenades a lot more effectively making this a wonderful perk we make our journey down south and after test firing more on some raiders because it's so much fun i would say this weapon is definitely up to scratch and cannonballs are just amazing the raiders and my luck don't really stand a chance which is really something considering the challenge that we're doing which is amazing but i decided to go against a few gunners because why not they're higher level than us but might as well duke it out and whilst it is a clutch fight it's pretty awesome then we can pretty much free tap these guys and we give them the good fight and let the cannonballs bludgeon them into oblivion when all is said and done we get the chinese stealth armor completing a quest called can you see me now and giving us a level up so it's time to get armor rank 2 which will come in handy but shortly after we're low on ammo and neck on neck as to whether we can make the journey but we see a mr gutsy and he wants to chase us but the last of our broadsider absolutely wrecks him as we reach our destination of the one and only atom cat no longer are we going to use t45 armor but we will be using my favorite power armor the t60 armor so now thanks to the atom cats we can lock and load with a cannon and some serious armor so now let's go take the story on with all them legendary enemies by smacking them with cannibals to the face what could be better after repairing our armor we go see preston and he wants us to help some settlements out so why not also we go to sturges and just hand in the side quests it gives bonus experience and with all that done it's time to go get nick valentine the trigger man and oh boy are they not ready for what's about to happen so we start off fairly tame our explosive sidearm temley to pistol is pretty good and the first few trigger men they are not even a thing and we eat them to restore health because we're kind of a cannibal but we need to show them how crazy we are and then the fun starts we enter after throwing an explosive present their way and then it's just volley after volley of glorious explosive cannonballs for every one one of them trigger man well we don't need to remove this mess since this time we do sleep in a bed shooting a naval cannon is tiresome people but now we resume and it's more cannon fire the broadsider is just so much fun the trigger man cannot stop us since todd has unleashed us into fallout ladies and gentlemen and we show the trigger man we're on a crusade to save nick valentine with our cannon from the honorable captain ironside none shall stop us during our rampage we even use our manners as captain ironside to be very 
disappointed if we didn't. Now, I know it's ridiculous, but we close the door, and when it opens, we just obliterate the trigger men, and they even shamble towards us, and we are just ruthless, and they are pancaked on the floor, in some cases, literally, like Dino here. We meet Nick Valentine and bulldoze our way through the trigger men, no problem, since there's two of us, and we are turning into a war machine at this point. Even Skinny Malone, for all his talk and bravado, we just shoot him with cannonballs, as that seems to be solving all our problems. But then when we get to topside, Nick asks us how we find him, we just say, just sheer luck. But on the way back to Diamond City, we quickly go into the Boston Library, and we grab the Intelligence Bobblehead, gaining more XP, because in this challenge, we're getting XP by the truckload and intelligence is always nice so with that gain nick wanting to see us in diamond city we quickly resupply and go see him we come to the conclusion kellogg cornflakes is responsible his house is in town we get the keys from the mayor how he doesn't see us in power armor i'm not quite sure but we do an epic jump and go to kellogg cornflakes house we flip a super secret switch that everybody knows if they've watched these video and dog meat decides we need to track kellogg all good so far. We have not one, but two level ups, and the first level goes into science, hence the intelligence bubble had been so good for us. And the second level up, I decide to get bloody mess, so we do a plus 5% damage. So, with our new perks, we journey on to Fort Hagen, the home of Kellogg Cornflakes, and we meet many enemies, including lots of ghouls on the way. But, turns out a baseball bat is a good solution to them, as we give them a good smacking, and we smash them until we get a home run, and they can't really do anything. When we do get to Fort Hagen, rather than wait cannonballs on the turrets around the actual base we decide to switch to our sidearm since it still has explosive damage and it is still no slouch here and then we get ourselves lots of loot from each of the turrets and i decide to go ahead and level up and we get science rank two simple yell effective once inside fort hagen well ladies and gentlemen we absolutely tear the new one our broadside of cannonballs are the way forward to destroy these ruffians and what's more is our baseball bat comes in handy to bash the armless sims yes we blew their arms off and yes they have a baseball bat to the face and our side arm is useful when their legs are missing oh we're not stopping with just the arm but the pirate ship slash naval cannon depending on your preference of course this smashes the institute in the face with its amazing firepower oh, anyone watching i think you could tell i'm loving this challenge the enemies are legendary and to be honest it just makes it more fun then we get kellogg and i'm sure you all know how this went because Kellogg is just a named NPC. He earns himself a grenade to hit the legs, and our cannon finishes his kneecaps off with a volley. And he is absolutely destroyed. Toughest man in the Commonwealth? I think not, because we are a cannon wielding madman for real. And he is now a bowl of cereal past its expiry date. But the Brotherhood of Steel are here, opening our next act of the challenge, so we head back to Sanctuary, and our science and armor help us out big time, as we can upgrade the T-60 power armor. Whilst it's mostly quality of life improvements, like being able to carry more weight, and having a lower chance of being addicted to chems, the big one is the helmet. We install an internal database. This increases our intelligence by two, that means we'll earn more experience in general, so our intelligence is now doing fantastic, like a perfect dish in a restaurant. What's more is that we also get the biggest improvement of all and our armor goes from model a all the way to model d this means that our base stats are improved across the board by about 30 percent so now our armor is in a really good state and our gear is pretty much finished now and it's time for us to complete the challenge so because we're going to side with the minimum first things first we need some settlements and there just so happens that there are three settlements we can grab very quickly so first up is a raid or clearing mission for one settlement this is fine we can do this very rapidly so loading up on cannonballs full steam ahead the raiders then need to take out and they're absolutely trivial it's just a lot of lobbing cannon fire at them very close to this area is hangman's alley and frankly it's much the same we just do a whole bunch of cannonballs in their faces so that's done it's over to the last objective on our little journey and that's the western water treatment plant so we turn up and start flipping switches and some mylurks say hello so hello mylurks however what they don't realize is we have a cannon and well the mylurks are so just useless that their shells are coming off them literally got to say this is a first me but 
more power to the broadsider rest assured we kill them all and then the water power plant is all good so we handle the quests in so we get the Opaland settlement hangman's alley and we eventually go to gray garden so three settlements under our belt in quick succession can't argue with that preston promotes us to be the minutemen general and i guess we fit the role as we are a war machine now and he decides that we need to take another settlement so thanks preston what i decide to do instead is rather than wait for preston to attack the castle we'll just go there ourselves since we're pretty tanky and speaking of which we have another two level ups i decide to get two ranks of blown wanderer so we take 30 percent less damage and we can carry 100 more weight a pretty damn amazing perk if i may say so myself so 30 percent less damage is a big deal but with that we set off to the castle which is bound to be crawling with mylurks but our previous experience shows that we can just deal with the mylurks no problem so when throngs of mylurks are here we do the usual thing of just bludgeoning them it is a absolute sight to behold and a heck of a lot of fun we just run around the castle just hunting mylurks it's absolutely amazing that when we're done hunting them their leader shows up looking terrible buying almost like a kraken and after some medics to prevent poison damage and psycho we just show them we're not to be messed with and that beast there well you are going to be vanquished creature with a naval firepower it's the most epic thing ever and reminds me of why fallout boys just so amazing it's just so much fun ladies and gentlemen it's so awesome now that i've calmed down with the my Lurk queen dead we go a step further and go to the castle cellar and we decide to take out sarge he doesn't fare too well even having a leg legendary mutation sarge is gone since cannonballs just rule we cook up our spoils in this case the mylurk meat we got and now we have all the healing items we need for the rest of the run so now with everything sorted it's time to go to see nick valentine and we see him and piper speaking like she knows a seven foot mobile battleship but nick is a bro and since he is a bro we escape piper by heading towards the memory den we get to the memory den then we talk to dr amari she plugs nick into a machine and we go through kellogg's memory we see kellogg and he speaks to a Corsa and Brian Virgil is mentioned so we speak to Dr. Amari and we come to the conclusion that we have to go to the Glowing Sea but we level up and we start to get bloody mess rank 2 so we get plus 10% damage for our weapons so we are locked and loaded it's off to see Virgil now when we get to the Glowing Sea it's not too bad especially in power armor and especially because we got lots of firepower it's pretty much like a holiday everyone here just gets absolutely destroyed by the cannon as if they're cannon fodder when you see rad scorpions limping and destroy them or a group of ghouls just getting exploded and mangled all the death claw outside virgil cave limping around is just a beautiful sight to behold we see virgil he gives us the lay of the land so we got to go kill a courser but before that we level up and get heavy gunner rank three for a total of 60 percent extra damage it's then off to green tech genetics and well the broadsider here it just really shines since we are in narrow corridors and these lovely mercenaries just can't stop us since we hit like a blimmin aircraft carrier now we actually have the damage threshold now where we can one shot these guys i can safely say this is the most powerful run we've done on fallout 4 on the channel since ever and that is no small feat the gunners they aren't even a problem at this rate and we just destroy them one after the other and also just to save on healing items i use cannonball after the conflict just to heal to almost full health it's then time to see the Corsa, and before he even comes to say hello, he gets a cannonball to the face. Look at him go. He's just getting hit, and then he turns invisible, but it doesn't really help him. So when we finish, we get the Corsa chip, and now we have all the pieces we need to get to the final act. So first things first, we go and see Desdemona, and she's trying to threaten us, but we're a big dude in power armor with a cannon pointed at her so i don't know about you desdemona but let's give you another chance so we wander off and let her try again but desdemona is desdemona so she just becomes hostile why don't know but we show them how it's done and wipe the smile off their faces and show that we are their worst nightmare and well it's similar to hunting my lurks as they get absolutely curb stomped and decide to bunch together for a grenade we then just continuously shoot them and shoot our way into the railroad hq we even decide to take pam out sorry pam but we kind of can't have a witness here but then we decide to decode the quarter chip ourselves using tinker tom's terminal and immediately get back to virgil 
Bible who gives us the plan. But we level up and our damage is now insane since we pick up Demolition Expert rank 3. So explosives do 75% more damage and affect a wider area. We are actually hitting insanely hard now. It's 270 damage a shot. But we go back to Preston with all our efforts and he says about the castle. But we've already done that. He says he'll meet us there and we just goes back to sleep. Well done, Preston. Meanwhile, we continue with our work with Sturgis and get the teleporter sorted. And when we get the teleporter, we teleport in through the Institute and descend the lift like the war machine we are. And then we see the evilest thing in Fallout 4, the child sim. The cannon fire doesn't work. He is behind a see-through wall and watches our struggle. And Senor Potato is his puppet. So, he has to die. Now that Senor Potato is dead and security is on its way, we fight our way out the Institute. And it takes a total of four shots to kill the Institute Sims because they have a good amount of armor and actually wear helmets. So, they're smart little cookies. But we do get back to the teleporter and get out of there. Preston has finally turned up and wants us to go ahead and get more settlements. So, that's not a problem but we do get a level up and I decide to go for adamantium skeleton rank 1 so limb damage is reduced by 30% so we are very tanky now and thanks to this and power armor this perk means we are just not getting crippled now we get a couple more settlements for the Minutemen, admittedly by killing the settlements and then just claiming the settlements for ourselves. Underhanded, yes, but ridiculously efficient. Also, yes, even though we have to chase children out of one of the settlements' radiuses, um, yeah, we're kind of the bad guys now. But we have our settlements and we report back to the castle. Ronnie Shaw then runs us through and she decides that we need to get some artillery at the castle. So we go to the cellar, which we've already been through, and we build some artillery because she gets us into the armory. Once all the blueprints and that are done, the artillery are then tested. But before that, we also level up and we get Adamantium Skeleton Rank 2. So our limbs couldn't be crippled before, but now limb damage is reduced by 60%. So we're a blimmin' juggernaut now. We then go speak to Preston and he says we need to defend the castle. We go back there and Ronnie is waiting for us. We can finally use artillery for the first time in these challenges. So I'm totally going to give it a try and see if the legendary enemies survive. But when Ronnie finishes, it's time to show these fellows what we're made of. And oh boy, oh boy, am I looking for to this ladies and gentlemen the artillery makes this defense a lot easier since we managed to cut one of the sides of attack so we can focus on shooting cannonballs apart from we don't have to since our defenses are just amazing and you can see the devastation at hand and it feels good really good but we do get a little bit of a firefight and it's just amazing so we're getting into the end game now it's been a wild ride but it is a challenge and it does need to have an ending so we go speak to ronnie she wants us to attack the institute and see if how it feels with the shoe on the other foot as she so says so we go to sturges and he finds a way in for us in the sewers quite apt i guess so we go on in and find the sewer grate and in we go there are several ghouls and they apparently have no legs and they are very quick quickly overcome with cannon fire. We get past them and now we face the simps and my word they are done for. A side note here, I don't know why these simps weren't legendary but I digress. We get through the maintenance tunnel and we're in the institute from the water maintenance pipe. When we get in, we use the targeting relay to get Preston and Co in and Preston hands us a pulse charge. We know what to do so it's time for one last spin before this challenge is over so let's make it a good one people. We use our explosive 10 millimeter pistol on some turrets then we start using our broadside to decimate the sim since our explosions are so big we're actually doing friendly fire here a few grenades and more cannonballs and we're doing amazing so we press on with the surprise attack into biosun and then we get to the main plaza and everyone bunches up and preston refuses to get out the way but we go like a loose cannon and tear them up and start running around just throwing grenades having cannonballs take the enemy's legs out and just going insane at this rate it's amazing but we go to the director's terminal and the child simp has been at it again Senor potato has been bamboozled by him as you can see here but we set him down and of course we go to the director's terminal and use the override then we jump down to do more combat and since it's the last little bit of combat it's almost over we just decimate everybody so then we go to advanced systems and now fight our way to the reactor and the last bits and pieces fall into place as we slay the enemies with pirate power one piece style and then place the pulse charge teleporting us out to the entrance and we try to harm the ultimate villain but alas todd says no so we teleport out ending the most amazing run 
answering the question, can you beat Fallout 4 of all enemies legendary? Yes. Yes, you can. And it's the most fun and epic adventure ever. Okay, calming down a little bit. This challenge was amazing. It was a no holds bar. Whilst the early game was very difficult, that explosive 10mm pistol at the beginning pretty much made this possible as it allowed us to get the almighty broadsider. I think you can tell the broadsider is one of my favourite weapons, definitely in the top three. And yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. But whilst the run was kind of a slow start, I did make sure to get lots of perks that could fund our war efforts. The most interesting thing about the broadsider is only one point a gun that is required to fully upgrade it, letting it come online very early, hence why I picked the weapon. However, as a side note, I am very sorry this video took a very long time. I originally did this challenge with a sniper rifle and I basically got an explosive hunting rifle and then combine a couple of legendary rifles the tinker tom special and the esda 2 and then made a found a 50 cal hunting rifle and combined them all together into a hunting rifle however the recording for that actually botched out so i actually had to do this challenge twice and i can safely say you can do this with the broadsider it's a lot easier or you can do this as a sniper which is still doable but you have to work around it a lot so there you go. I can safely say I've done this challenge twice now. But for those of you that got this far, thank you so much for watching. Our next challenge is going to be Skyrim using only restoration. So that is going to be a lot of fun. Definitely got a plan going into that one. But with all that said and done, thank you very much for watching. You've all been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for getting this far. You are an absolute trooper if you have like the video if you like the video comment down below if you wish and even if you want to say hello and of course once again thank you for watching you are amazing you the audience are fantastic and thank you just thank you for watching thank you for letting me do youtube it is absolutely phenomenal you guys are amazing thank you very much this is insane frame and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you very much Thank you for making this a dream come true. Farewell and goodbye for now. See you in the next one. Take care, you lovely people.